Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone here at All for Jesus Church. We are now on our Sunday worship service. We believe in Trinity that our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit are one God. We are a full gospel, non-sectarian, non-denominational church. Amen. Praise God. I'm inviting everyone to join us, hallelujah, as we sing our opening song, Jesus' name above all names. There's no Amen. other name under heaven, but only Jesus, hallelujah. We power in the name of Jesus. There is salvation only found in Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Let the multitude of isles be glad. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Our Jesus reigns forever and ever. And Amen. therefore, let us rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. For our God is living, our God is alive, and God is able. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus, that no one else can love us, Lord. Only your love, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
every church will say amen and amen. amen. And call now my mom to lead us to our tithes and offering message for today. Praise God. Let's open our Bible in Malachi 3.10. Bring the full tent into the storehouse so that there will be food in my house. Test me. In this way, says the Lord of hosts, see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measures. Amen. Uh, let's pray our tithes and offering. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessing that you give to us, the protection and your faithfulness to us, Lord Jesus. You are so wonderful, Lord God. Lord, we offer our tithes and offering to you, Lord God. Accept, Lord God. As you said in your words, Lord God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. But as you said in your words, that you put all your blessing upon us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we wish you supernatural increase and provision in our lives, Lord Jesus. Basically, mentally, is for the financial in the name of God. And we trust again to you next week, our lives, our families, And he said, He who shows mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Pastor Isaiah T. Sungguan Jr. Good morning, everyone. And we welcome you back here in the Home for Jesus Church on our Sunday worship service. We are live also in Facebook as well as in YouTube. But before we proceed, let us pray, Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for this day that you have given unto us again once more, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, thank you for this opportunity that you have given unto us once more to spread your words, Lord. To spread your holy words to all nations. But first, Lord, forgive our sins. Because our sins always separate you from us. You said, you, Lord, in your words in First John 1 John 1.9 that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive our sins and purify us unto all unrighteousness. We thank you for your, father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord that you have given unto us as a sacrifice without the shedding of the blood of your son Jesus Christ there is no forgiveness of our sins we thank you Lord for your loving kindness for your great mercy your faithfulness Lord we thank you Father and be with us tonight, today Lord be with us this morning and let your holy words be manifested in our lives and in our minds. And let your words, let all men in, the, in this world that be a doer of your words. Not only listeners of your words, but a doer of your words. We thank you, Father. Be with us again today, Lord. And let your name be lifted up in this place. And let your name be glorified in this place. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. You heard about the story of the camel and the rich man in our previous of uh, preaching the previous weeks and also the story of Lazarus and the rich man this time we were going to meet a Jewish 
lead uh, lawyer man abogado and Jesus our text for today is found in Luke chapter 10 verse 25 to 37 which entitled the good Samaritan and eternal life I strongly suggest brothers and sisters to have your own Bible Amen. to have a much clearer understanding about this message to summarize our story <clears throat> one day a Jewish lawyer approached Jesus he was a remarkable an extraordinary man <laughs> of fine character although writer Luke did not give his name this man was an expert amen, and he skilled in the law of Moses he was an outstanding lawyer about his knowledge of the law of Moses he spent his life studying the law interpreting it and teaching it in the synagogues it was part of his dignified and distinguished duty to decide questions regarding the law the gospel of luke introduces this intelligent man as a scribe in jesus day man he was a lawyer in this modern day as a serious prosecutor and attorney and sincere seeker of truth writer look regularly presents lawyers experts interpreters of the law as antagonist and adversary of jesus Amen. the Pharisees the Sadducees and the scribes and the elders of Judea prided or did take pleasure in their accomplishments and abilities on their knowledge of the law the books written by Moses they went too far <laughs> Amen. they went too far as to categorize or classify and characterize the scriptures into major and minor principles the major ones of course is mandatory in other words they are necessary and important and the minor principles were not so mandatory in other words they are lesser in importance they are lesser in seriousness and they are lesser in significance in what's that in this important parable of our study the good samaritan we come to see the hypocrisy and the insufficiency and lack of man's ability to save himself you might be thinking I thought this parable was about being nice to others or the hero this is probably the most well-known parable of them all and that the most misunderstood and misapplied parable of them all now here is the test question the main, the main character in these parables are number one the good samaritan of course number two the man who was robbed <laughs> Amen. number three the people who were past the red man what do each of this it stands for in other words what to be symbolized and represent these three characters likewise the parable begins in verse 30 so why we are starting in verse 25 what does the lawyer question have to do with the parable the setting now is this 
we are about six months prior to the crucifixion of Jesus. Jesus is teaching to a large crowd. Amen. He's teaching to a large crowd. As a large crowd are now common around him. Jesus is the most seldom difficult to find. Whenever there's a large crowd gather around, just follow the crowds. And there he is. Now, while Jesus is teaching, while Jesus is speaking, the lawyer stands up. Amen. Tumayo. This gets the attention of everyone. Their eyes is focused on him. And off to Jesus, the scribe or the lawyer is one who belongs to the best and respectful of individual rights groups in Jesus' name. They do not seek the answer. They do not seek answer for everyone. In other words, to help them, but they seek attention, they seek adoration and position in order to satisfy and delight their own self-importance and self-admiration. In their eyes, it is far better to have the suffering crowd looking up to and independent of them than it is to discover solution for the problems who are in need. Now, in verse 25, I want you to read with me. He questions Jesus. He said, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, this is a scribe, man. This is a lawyer, an expert of the scripture. He is not interested in eternal life, but his motives lie in catching Jesus in an error. So, as to discredit him, and then people will look back to the lawyer, amen, as their expert rather than Jesus. The picture is amplified and intensified here. With the notice that the lawyer is testing Jesus, just as the devil did in Matthew 4 verse 7. The lawyer may call Jesus teacher, but he really is putting himself in the possession of grading Jesus' answer. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. In other words, he is waiting Jesus' answer and gave him a rating and a score. He puts Jesus to the test with a sharp, mocking, interrogatory mind. He has a question to test Jesus. The word test is in the intensive or concentrated form. In short, to test thoroughly or extensively. He was seeking as a teacher to reveal the mind of Jesus, the master teacher, even he seeks not only the answer to his question, but as to how Jesus processes his conclusion. How did Jesus, the master teacher, think? This lawyer was highly intelligent man of great ability. Let's give him a benefit of doubt <laughs> and accept what he says for now. For now, brother look. take us to the heart of the passage. Amen. With this lawyer question to Jesus, the, lawyer, the Jewish lawyer asked the question in verse 25, letter B. I want you to read with me. Teacher, he asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? This is a typical, unconventional, and easy-going approach to life. The truth is ignored. The truth is ignored. And the lies is spread in order to gain their popularity. 
their selfish motives are greater than their desire to help others. Better to discredit the truth and gain power than to pursue the truth and help others. So, this is the attitude of this radical and politically, politically correct scribe. This Jewish scholar came to Jesus asking him about eternal life. Is there any law that will give this kind of life? What can he do to obtain it? So Jesus returns the question with the question. The lawyer asks what he can do in order to gain eternal life. But Jesus throws him back to the very scripture in which he thinks he is an expert. Jesus asks him in verse 26, I want you to read with me what is written in the law. How do you read it? The lawyer responds back correctly by quoting from Deuteronomy 6 verse 5 and Leviticus 19 verse 18. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. In verse 27, and Jesus told him, in verse 28, you have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. Good answer, man. <laughs> now, go and do it. The reason is, if you would attain to eternal life by keeping the law, then keep the law. Amen. Do it and live. Keep on doing it and live. However, there is one problem. Have you done it? Do you know anyone who has loved the Lord with all your heart? With all your soul? With all your strength? With all your mind? And your neighbor as yourself? You have done it. Have you done it every day? Every hour of your life? With no failure and neglect? With the Holy God. With the Holy God. 99.999% is the failure. Amen. Yes, you heard it right. 70%. Is an F failed your in your spiritual report card. One hundred percent is the passing grade to our God. For whoever keeps the whole law, for whoever keeps the whole law, and yet stumbles at just one point, he has become guilty of all. <laughs> James two verse ten. How many times do you have to break the law to be lost? How many times do you have to fail in the sight of the Holy God to become guilty? If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. <laughs> and his words is not in us. First John 1 verse 10. We are only deceiving ourselves and no one else. The Bible is clear that to be saved by keeping the law requires that one keep the whole law perfectly all the time. The law must be kept all of it without any omissions or failures or exceptions all the time. In order to justify by the law, one must be perfect. The main response, the main response should have been, Lord, how can I do this? I'm not able to, I'm not able to, Lord. I need your help. Instead, he tried to justify himself. <laughs> that is to defend himself against God's Jesus' words. So he tried to go 
he tried to move the focus off. In other words, he tried to stay away off himself by asking the definition and meaning of a neighbor. <laughs> the lawyer, as it is mentioned in our passage, submitted the question in order to trap Jesus. He was not interested in being instructed by Jesus. By this, Jesus showed a demonst or demonstrated to him and those who were listening that was what was required and that mankind does not have the ability and power to accomplish in himself the means of salvation. He is in need of something greater, amen? A greater righteousness. In order to be saved, Jesus, the Son of God, is standing right before the crowd and this lawyer. But the question before one can have a relationship to God is to recognize Him first. Amen. In other words, acknowledge Him and accept Him. Ac accept Him first as your Lord and Master. Amen. The lawyer had the academic and his scholastic knowledge. Napag-aralan niya. But he did not accept even the scriptures in which he was supposed to be an expert. He not only stumbled or faltered in the first part of the answer by not recognizing, Je recognizing Jesus, but he faltered in the second portion by trying to outwardly and superficially define who a neighbor is. <laughs> Amen. An attempt to impose artificial morals. In other words, he is trying to apply and set a bogus and fake emotional level. If this lawyer is dishonest, he just failed onto his own mental and spiritual trap. His system of law keeping made eternal life impossible. Even in Romans 3 verse 20 declares, the soul that sins will surely die even by the works of the law. No flesh will be justified in his sight for the law comes the knowledge of sin. Sinful man cannot live up to the holy demands of the law. The purpose of the law was not to give eternal life. The purpose of the law was to reveal sin, not to give eternal life. In Galatians 3 verse 22, but the scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin, amen? So that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. The purpose of the law was to convict us of sin and point us to the Savior who can save us from our sin and guilt. The law was never meant to save anyone, amen? It was powerless. It was being used for wrong purpose. The lawyer knew he didn't have eternal life. So he tried to put Jesus on the defensive. He was in trouble. He was in trouble spiritually. He was guilty of breaking the law. Now, unexpectedly, the lawyer feels obligated man, to justify himself. This is usually what happens when we come under the conviction of our sinfulness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the lawyer asks Jesus a second question. Wishing to justify himself, he asks Jesus in verse 29, I want you to read with me. And who is my neighbor? In his mind, in his mind, his neighbor could never be a Gentile. 
he would have to be a Jewish, an Israelite, and a Pharisee. Then Jesus answered the lawyer by telling him a story, the story of the good Samaritan. In verse 10, verse 30, in Luke 10, verse 30 to 37, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. In verse 31, a priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. <laughs> um, he was. In verse 32, so too, an Evite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed on the other side. Um, he was then. In verse 33, but a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And he was, and he saw it. He took pity on him. In verse 34, he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring out oil and wine. Then he put the man on his donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. He said, When I return, I will reimburse you for extra expense you may have. Which of this, which of this tree, do you think was the neighbor of the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? In verse 37, the expert of the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Note, however, how Jesus was has changed matter by the end of the parable. When he asked the lawyer, which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? Instead of focusing on the object of one's action, Jesus focuses on the subject and essentially is asking who did neighborly acts. The lawyer, unable to say the Samaritan. <laughs> Instead, he said, the one who showed him mercy. Now, when Jesus said to him, go and do likewise, we have a direct answer. Mercy is the outward manifestation of pity. The word mercy is used of God, who is rich in mercy towards sinner, amen. Yeah. Ephesians 2 verse 4, who has proved salvation to, for all men, Titus 3 5. The lawyer was lacking in this one thing, he had never experienced God's marvelous grace. All he could think of was legalism and evasion and merit. He was too busy, man. He was too busy justifying himself in the eyes of man and God. Who is the good Samaritan in our story? It is the Lord Jesus himself. The good Samaritan is Jesus, our kinsman redeemer. He is our savior, the son of God. The son of man who was going to seek and to save and which was lost in, verse, in Luke 19 verse 10 thank you he has the power and means to redeem he owns the whole universe amen and therefore he has the purchase price he is the spotless son of God he is sinless and pure in the sight of God and man what is Jesus is saying to the lawyer and anyone else who thinks he can he can have he can earn eternal life? The Jewish religious system was completely bankrupt. Amen. No keeping was not the way to eternal life. 
because no one is able to live up to the demands of the law of God. In order to save by keeping the law, he must fulfill every requirement of the law all the time and with his whole heart, soul, mind and strength, not half-heartedly. Hindi kalahati sa puso. That's no. Not that's a habit. <coughs> Excuse me. Not that's a hobby or a pastime. Not that's a religious enthusiasm and obsession. Not even the most sincere religious moral person of the world has ever known. The law can only condemn. It cannot save. The law is powerless uh, to save you. The lawyer was guilty. Just as you and I, you and I, are guilty of breaking the law. You and I cannot earn or merit eternal life. No matter how good you think you are, amen, or how religious you may be, eternal life is an inheritance, amen. It is a gift. It's not something you earn or do. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? The answer is nothing. Nothing. Stop thinking you can do something to merit it. You get your own inheritance through our relationship with God. You receive it amen, because you are his child, man, born to his family spiritually by the new birth. It is by faith that it may all be by grace. It is God's free gift. It's not by obedience, man, by mean, by merits or works. It is all by grace, through faith. He start believing that God came in person of His Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins. If you place your faith to Jesus as the only Savior, He will, he will save you by His grace and immediately give you the gift of eternal life. Amen. The moment you declare the moment you declare your bankruptcy and believe in Christ, you inherit eternal life. In Romans 10, 9, gives the only requirement for man to be saved. Read it carefully and think about this, these words of Apostle Paul. He writes, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, man. For it is with the for with the heart a person believes resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. And in John 3 16, for God to love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have an everlasting life. Amen. Here, put your name in the place of the word. Of the word, word. Replace that word to your own name. And read the verse again. Replace the word whoever with your own name. And read it a third time. Moreover, who he believes in him is not judged. He, he does, who does not believe has already been judged already, amen? Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. In verse 18, he who believes in the Son has eternal life. But he who does not obey the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides in him. Amen. Don't try to be a Samaritan unless 
you have a personal relationship with Jesus, amen, as Lord and Savior. Your inheritance is secure, and your heart is already filled with love, mercy, and power. Now, you can be a good Samaritan. It begins with a change of heart from the inside out. When we place our faith in God, then He comes and dwells in us. And His love begins to flow through us to others. That is the only way you can love your neighbor. Christ floods and saturates our hearts with His life. It's an exchange life. He gives His life to us to reach the lost world. To God be the glory. Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for this wonderful message that you have given to us, Lord. We thank you for the gift, the free gift of salvation, Lord. We thank you for saving us, Lord. And we accept you as our Lord and our Savior. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What a wonderful message. Truly that without Christ, we are nothing. Amen. It is not by our works. It is not by anything we can be save ourselves, but only through Jesus Christ alone. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right now, we're going to go to our to the prayer request of our brothers and sisters amen and we're encouraging you to pray with us praise god our first prayer request is from sister patricia shena balete she's asking to pray for god's provision and protection from any sicknesses and diseases especially the omicron in the philippines hallelujah and pray for for her healing for she's feeling not well and she's having headache and pray for the philippines she's asking to pray for the philippines and to all the people who got infected by the omicron and also pray for her name is preciosa opera opera rio to return to her family. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for her right now. Praise God. Yes. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, truly, Lord God, you have said that whatever we ask in your name, in prayer and believe, we will receive it. And Lord, we pray for Sister Patricia Shena Balete. Hallelujah. We pray for your divine protection over her and the whole family especially from Omicron. We pray, Lord God, that you continue to give her the confidence, Lord, that she can always rely on your word, that you will never leave her nor forsake her and the whole family as well. We pray to take away the fear in her heart and always remind her that you are God who is always in control. We pray for the provision, Lord God, whatever her heart's desire, Lord God. We pray for your favor over her life. And we ask you, Lord God, to guide her and give her the wisdom. And also we pray for your divine healing right now in her life, in Jesus' name. Whatever she's feeling, Lord God, that is... Uh, the whatever the ache and the pains in her in her body lord we pray for your divine healing over her truly lord jesus that by your stripes we are healed in jesus name we sister patricia is also healed in jesus name and we pray lord god for those people who got infected by the omicron in the philippines and around the world whoever they are lord god we pray that you reveal yourself to them that you are jesus and that nothing is impossible for you to do that you are jesus the only healer the great healer and lord we pray Oh, as well for Sister Preciosa Operario, we pray, Lord God, that you continue to be in her heart, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you will move in her heart, Lord, in her deepest soul, Lord Jesus. Always, Lord God, remind her, Lord, that you love her, Lord God. And fill her heart, Lord God, whatever the emptiness, Lord, that she that she is feeling right now, Lord God, we pray that you will show it to her, Lord God, that you are the only one who can satisfy her, Lord God. Just like the woman in the well, Lord God. Lord, we believe that you will restore her, Lord God, and that 
that she will have a heart to love you and that she will have a heart to return to her family, Lord God, the family that you have given to her, Lord God. Remind her, Lord God, that she is blessed to have a family that loves her and wait for her. Hallelujah. And Lord, right now we pray for Brother Jerobin. We pray for the recovery of his family who got infected by the Omicron. Lord, we pray for the fast recovery. We pray, Lord God, that you will protect them, Lord Jesus. We pray to strengthen their physical body, strengthen their external and internal body uh, organs, Lord God. And we pray that you continue, Lord, to move in their hearts, Lord God, and whatever they need, supply it as well, Lord Jesus. And continue, Lord, to guide them, Lord, and use uh, Brother Jeroben, Lord God, mightily for your kingdom. Thank you, Jesus, for we believe, Lord God, all this prayer request has been heard. Truly, Lord God, that nothing is impossible to those who believe in you. And Lord God, we pray, Lord Jesus, for all those brothers and sisters who listen today, Lord God. Lord, uh, anyone who wants to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, please follow this prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we ask you, Lord God, to forgive us for all our sins, Lord God, Amen. for the things that I have done. I'm asking you to forgive me, Lord God, and I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Yes. I believe that you are the only way, Lord Jesus, and you're you're the only truth, Lord. And I receive you as my Lord and my Savior in my life. Thank you, Lord, for this eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that you have sealed me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We encourage all our brothers and sisters, if you have followed that prayer, please find a local church or you can always tune in here in All for Jesus Church in our YouTube channel. If you have prayer requests, we encourage you to write us at, yeah, at All for Jesus Church at yahoo.com. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Let's sing our victory song, What a Mighty God We Serve. Praise God. endurance and encouragement grant you to live such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ that together you may with one voice glorify the Lord the God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in Jesus name Amen, Amen. thank you brothers and sisters God bless